Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever you're watching this video, know that I appreciate you. Uh, it is Jay, and welcome to the day in the daily life of Jay. And I'm doing something that I don't typically do, just like the uh, makeup removal routine that I, a uh, video that I did a couple of weeks ago. I'm doing something else um, just to share. Um, I'm going to share with you all how I cut my hair um, and why I cut my hair. Um, so I've got my, you can't see it, I got my big camera set up over here so that you can get those angles or so that I can get those angles um, for when I start actually cutting it. But I wanted to just quickly share with you before I started that why I cut my hair. And I am in my master bathroom because it's bigger than the guest bathroom and it's easier to do it this way. And hopefully the music that's playing in the background in the living room, you cannot hear, excuse me, um, in this video. Uh, but my, my husband has music playing in the, in the living room uh, and he might pop in. I told him what I was getting ready to do and he's like, what? So, because he's not, he's not used to me doing these kind of videos either. So, um, yeah, this is a little bit different. But I cut my hair because, and I'm going to, in between this clip and the clip of me start, of me cutting my hair, I'm going to insert some pictures of what my hair looked like before. Um, and then before I decided to cut it, when I decided to cut it, and um, after, you know, you'll see the, the end result after I've cut it. Um, and I don't uh, mind sharing because I think that um, people need to know, women specifically need to know what, um, that they're not alone, what my journey is and that they're not alone in their journey. Um, so anyway, several years ago, I started losing my hair due to stress. Um, I have what is called stress-induced alopecia. Now, I don't know the medical term for the alopecia that I have, but the layman terms, the layman's term is stress-induced. Um, and this happened towards the end of my first marriage on into um, the subsequent se separation and then divorce. Um, so, yeah, and I am in no way blaming my ex-husband for this because it was really all about how I received everything that was going on around me, how I took it in, and then how my body reacted to it. Um, this is why I say that stress is a killer. I mean, scientifically, it's proven stress is a killer, but um, it doesn't necessarily have to kill you. It can attack your body in different ways. As you all know, um, last year, early last year, early 2018, I was in the hospital and on um, IV antibiotics for several months and had to have two surgeries because stress had overtaken my body and I became septic. I was full of infection. My bloodstream was um, infected, but that's not what this video is about. I've got plenty of videos on that. Um, and this video isn't about my first marriage and how disappointing I disappointing it was um, and how disappointed I was. But this is about alopecia, stress-induced alopecia, why I cut my hair and um, the end results. So stress-induced alopecia, and I'm going to show you the spots that were impacted. So right here, it just looks like um, male pattern baldness and there is baldness in my family or hair thinning in my family um, my grandmother my father's mother had thinning hair my mother's mother had thinning hair so this is kind of normal but it was intensified because of the alopecia so it's here here and here and to impact it even further, um, I also have um, psoriasis in my scalp. 
And that is what eventually took me into a dermatologist. My first, my PCP, who referred me to a dermatologist because I was having some, and I'm hoping, hope I can get this well. But in this area, I was having some severe itching and dry skin and to the point where it was bleeding. I really hope that you got to see that. Um, to the point where it was bleeding in this area. Um, and even the pattern of my hair goes differently here. But it was to the point where it was actually bleeding when I scratched it. Um, and I had no clue what it was. So I went to my PCP, like I said. She referred me to a dermatologist. And that dermatologist is the one that diagnosed me with psoriasis in my scalp. Um, and he prescribed medications. And I haven't used these medications in years. As a matter of fact, I don't even have all of the stuff that he prescribed. I stopped using it because I found a better, more natural uh, solution. But I do have one of the medications that he prescribed still here. I need to toss it. This is one of the medications that he prescribed as well as um, an oil. And this medicine is so old. It expired in 2016, so I'm gonna toss it now. Um, it expired in 2016. So that means that my diagnosis was probably in 20, no, my diagnosis wasn't in 2015. My diagnosis was probably in 2013 or 14. And I say that because um, it was not long after my husband and I were married in 2011. We were taking him to the doctor for his diabetes and um, probably a year or so into that journey is when my scalp started really bothering me. Um, and it took a good three to six months before I got in to see the dermatologist. So probably 2013 is when I was diagnosed, started taking the meds. Uh, as a matter of fact, I know it was 2013 because we were living in a certain apartment when I got the medicine. Um, but anyway, so started taking the meds. I didn't like them. It required that I do too much um, and it made it difficult for me to sleep. I had to put wash my hair in one thing, put a, a topical oil or that lotion on, no, a topical, uh, um, yeah, that lotion, which is really clear but they call it lotion, I had to put that on. And then there was the oil that I had to put on uh, and had to sleep in a plastic cap. I hated that. That was just too much. Um, it was just too much, so I hated that. And I found something that was a little bit, that was natural, that worked um, just as well. It took a while for it to start working, but it worked. Um, and now I use something even better than what I was using before. And I'll talk about that in just a moment. So. I used to hide the bald spots with protective hairstyles, like because I was natural and had been natural for years. I used to twist my hair all the time, do twist outs. I would um, put braids in my hair. I did all that stuff. I knew how to do that stuff myself. I didn't have to go to a shop or someone to do it for me. I knew how to do it myself. I taught myself how to do it and was so good at it that I would do it for others occasionally. It wasn't something that I really enjoyed doing. So I didn't do it very often for others. Um, and even of um, trying to hide the spots. And, and it became much more difficult because as you can see how wide this is, it became much more difficult to hide. And of course I had more hair. It was longer, I had longer hair around these spots. Um, so it was easy to cover, but it became much more difficult as this got wider. So, um, yeah, I got tired of doing that. Got tired of twisting it, got tired of braiding it, got tired of taking it down, um, got tired of hiding it and decided it was time for me to live my life um, the way that was most comfortable for me. And what has always been most comfortable for me was just to be myself. And I can't be the best that God created me to be if I'm not being myself. So I started using, um, just in the last year, a couple of products that actually work. And I'm gonna do a separate video on one product 
because I've had it for, if not a year, almost a year. And it's worked. If I were more consistent with using it, I'm sure that it would work a lot better than it does. Uh, and that's this um, Kaleidoscope Miracle Drops. And it is for, it is to revitalize the hair follicles and strengthen weak hair. Um, and I have been using it, it's like it's almost gone, you can't see, but it's almost gone. I've been using it inconsistently for probably a year. Um, I said before, almost a year, but probably a year. Uh, my daughter used it a little bit too. We bought it together just to see, um, and then she left it here when she moved out. But I used that, and like I said, I think if I used it more consistently, my results would be better. But it has brought about some uh, hair growth. It has brought about some, I will say that. And I'm saying that because my scalp, when I first lost it, was like this. Literally like this. No hair, no nothing. It was smooth. Um, and the natural products that I started using to relieve the, uh, the cirrhosis, psoriasis, I'm sorry, I keep, I go back and forth between the, the proper way to pronounce it, psoriasis and cirrhosis. Cirrhosis is a disease of the liver. Psoriasis is a skin ailment, an autoimmune disease. Um, and anyway, so um, the natural product that I was using helped a little bit with the growth as well. Um, but not as much as this did. And again, if I use that even more, I would probably get even better results. So um, what I use now to oil my scalp and to um, work on that spot that was itchy um, is a concoction that I made myself. And the one of the main ingredients that helps me, ingredient, ingredients in this, uh, concoction that helps me is the tea tree oil because it uh, minimizes or eliminates fungi. So um, if you ever have a situation, I, even in the uh, feet, you can use it for an anti-fungal anti for the feet as well. So if you have a situation, and I don't mind sharing the ingredients that I have in here because I'm not selling it, so I don't care um, if you know what's in here. Um, I know some of the things that are in here, but of course, um, I just got tea tree oil in here too. Uh, so that's part of the thing. One of the key ingredients that helps with antifungal um, issues or fungal issues. Um, so anyway, making this a lot longer than it has to be. So I started losing the hair. I got tired of trying to hide it. So I cut it all off. I did what is called a big chop and I have not gone back every once in a while I let it grow into a little bit of a fro and I might toss in a couple of pictures um, of that as well but it usually doesn't get too much longer than like an inch maybe an inch and a half um, and then I get tired of it I get tired of combing it I get tired of dealing with it um, and then again we have the issue of that spot that's still there, that's still rather thin, um, and trying to, you know, cover that. I, I don't care to cover it. Um, it is what it is. If the hair grows back, great. If it doesn't grow back, that's okay too. Um, but all of that was caused by stress. I was in a really rough part towards the end of my first marriage. I was really stressed out about what to do and how to handle it. As a Christian who believes in marriage, it was tough for me to come to the conclusion that divorce was inevitable. Um, so I, I was having a hard time with it and my body was reacting to all of that. I had additionally, um, in addition to losing the hair, I had additionally lost a good 50 pounds in a matter of three months unintentionally. Um, it was just the stress. It was I couldn't hold anything. Everything was coming out of me that I put in my body. Anything I ate, it was just coming out of me um, one way or the other. And it was all stress. It was all stress. So um, when I finally reached the point of let me be me and I had gotten back to a healthy point of, you know, gaining the weight back, not all of it that I lost, but gaining a little bit of it back so that I could look healthy and not look so sickly. Um, 
I came to the conclusion that I wanted to just go ahead and cut my hair off. So I did that. And it's been that way, like I said, ever since. Um, I want to show you a couple of other products that I use um, to wash my hair. Now, I haven't looked up this person, so I don't know their um, history. But it's something that I found works really well for me. I've washed my hair this morning in, in the shower. Um, so I have not oiled it. I'll oil it after I cut it with this. But the shampoo and conditioner that I use is Joanne Jones. Um, let's see if I can do it this way. Strengthening Argon and Keratin Shampoo. And the conditioner. And I actually found this at Marshall's when I worked for Marshalls. Um, I found that there and decided to try it and see if it will work for me and it absolutely does. It cleanses my scalp really well, it conditions my hair really well and um, I hope that I can find it again when it's time for me to re-up. I've had it for, I've had this for at least a year but it's still like half full because I don't wash my hair every time I get in the shower. I just don't. Um, I have a dry scalp and you'll see when I cut my hair how dry my scalp is. Um, so I don't wash it every time I get in the shower. I might wash my hair once a week. Um, and that's because it gets to a point where when I'm running my fingers through my hair or across my scalp, I may get oil build up under my nails. And that's when I know it's time for me to wash it. Um, I like the argan and keratin. Uh, argan oil works better for me uh, than coconut oil does on my hair. And there are people who are like that all over the place. Everyone likes coconut oil. I like coconut oil for cooking. Um, but everyone likes it for body care. And it is great. It's absolutely great for those who can take it. Um, those who don't have an adverse reaction to it. I've also noticed it in the natural hair care products that I make for myself, the natural hair, the natural body uh, products that I make for myself, the oils that I make to moisturize my body with. I can't use coconut oil in that because it makes my skin really, really, um, it counteracts the, the nourishing attributes of the other oils that I use. So it makes my skin really dry and um, hard. And I like soft, supple skin, moisturized. Excuse me, my hands are super dry because I wash my hands all the time. Um, but anyway, so I found that argan oil is better for me than coconut oil um, in the sense of skin and hair care. And I like it. I mean, my hair is actually soft right now. It's really, very soft right now. Um, and it does what it's supposed to do. It would, I would probably get better results if I had longer hair. I could probably see the benefits better if I had longer hair. I just don't have the patience to let this stuff grow out and maintain it and deal with it. Kudos to everybody that does. I just can't do it. So once I cut my hair, I'm going to wash my scalp uh, again, a very simple way um, and condition it again and then oil it um, in a very, very bathroom sink way. Like I said, I washed it this morning when I was in the shower and then I decided I'm gonna cut my hair today. So once I cut it, I'm gonna wash it again, condition it again, and then oil it. So I got all my tools set up. Let me get the other camera going, and I'm gonna do the video with that camera and then come back to this one. I was saying before um, I'm gonna go ahead and cut it and through here I'll probably just toss in some music um, because this part is long um, and boring and I may not talk through the whole thing um, but as you can see I got my products set up so I got my shampoo my conditioner um, my hair oil which I really need to replenish um, my mirror the towel that I'm going to use when it's time for me to wash my hair and the towel that I'm going to use to cover my clothes with, my neck and my clothes with so I don't get hair all over um, my, my clothes. 
Um, so, and just a shout out to my hometown, Chicago. Uh, and I don't even know if you can see my face right now because I haven't done anything to raise the camera up. So I hope that you can see me. But shout out to my hometown, Chicago, and the King Bowl Bowling Alley. That's where this shirt is from. Um, my grandparents bowled um, when I was a child. And I bowled as a child. And then I got my children into bowling. And this is actually a shirt that I wore as a parent of bowlers. Um, and I liked it supersized. I loved supersized because I could cover my butt and wear my leggings when I, went, when I took them to bowling on Saturdays. But anyway, so let me go ahead and get set up. Oh, and my husband's wall um, clippers. Um, I use these as well. I use these to cut my hair. So let's get us started. I'm going to take my glasses off in a minute. But let me get set up with this towel and you might be able to better see that spot where I had the um, psoriasis in my scalp and that's really the only place I have the psoriasis I also have eczema um, but eczema shows up on my hands my face and sometimes my legs um, that's why my hands look like this when they're so dry because of the eczema and uh, it's in my face right up in here and um, I used to get it on my ears, uh, the tip of my ears. And I did not discover that I had it, did not know I had it until I was pregnant with my first child and my ears broke out. And at the ears, the back of the neck and the face in here and I had no clue what was going on. I was doing all kinds of things to moisturize and um, made it worse. And when I went to my one of my prenatal visits, I asked the doctor about my skin and he said, it looks like eczema, but I'm gonna send it to somebody. And sure enough, the dermatologist said, it's eczema. Don't put any oil on it, moisturize it, use coke, uh, what is it? Oatmeal soap enriched with um, cocoa butter and that should help and that's the same thing I had to do for my son when he was born because he was born practically covered in eczema uh, his legs were practically covered in eczema and um, his hands part of his back and a little part of his chest and stomach um, so the same thing that I used for me while I was pregnant with him I had to use for him after I had him so anyway let's get back to me clipping my hair so I start, let me turn this way so you can see, I start here, and you'll see that when I start, and then work my way to the back. And forgive my bathroom, but it's just a regular bathroom um, with the regular accoutrement. Toothpaste, toothbrushes, mouthwash, paper towels. But yes, I start with the sides, the front and the sides, and work my way up into like a weird looking mohawk.
take this mirror, my little hand mirror, and Now, I'm gonna do something that's really gross and funny all at the same time. But I have to do it because I have to see. Um, I have to see where I need to go back. This way here real quick. I'm trying to get this hair off the edge of the sink and off the countertop. When my husband cuts his hair, he makes a massive mess. Hair all over the place. But I try to keep it all contained so I don't have as much to clean up. Um, but yeah, gross and funny all at the same time. It's snowing. Loose hair. And dry scalp or dry skin. But you can really see how dry my scalp is. Again, I washed it this morning, did not oil it. And whenever I do this, whenever I cut my hair, I always get thrown off by these two sections here because there is still hair there, but they had to get it some more. Um, but it looks like there's hair hair there, but it isn't. It's eczema. Um, that's enough. This developed probably in the last few years. I don't remember when I first noticed it, but I did notice it and I'm like, okay, that's eczema. Um, so I just wanna make sure that I got all of the hair. My husband loves when I cut my hair. He's like, oh, there's my wife. That's how he met me. I was bald and that's actually how he used to have me programmed in his phone as Baldy.
and I made him take it out. So yeah, there's some spots that I need to go over in the back. And I hope this is recording. If it isn't, then I have to do it all over again. Um, another day. Is that there in here? Yeah. Um, okay, so this is as good as it's going to get. Now, I don't know if you can see or not. Let's see if I can show you. But here is where the psoriasis is, all in this area. And it's actually not bad right now. Um, like I said, my concoction actually really works. And uh, I want this dry freaking scalp. So let me go ahead and wash. Well, let me clean this hair up first. And I'll go ahead and do a quick sink wash. And you're going to think I'm nuts for how I do it. But I don't do the dip your head under the faucet thing. Clean his hair up here first. I don't do the dip your head in the faucet thing. Um, because I don't need to. as much hair out as I can. The rest will have to go down the drain. So, I think they're both going to be cool. I might do a workout video my morning workout routine. Um, and post it on here. And I'm saying that now because the cold water reminds me. I actually do my morning workout routine in the morning. Part of it while I'm waiting for the water to warm up. Um, and part of it while I'm brushing my teeth. And then the third, I do three exercises in the morning. The third part I do after I've done everything else. So, water's warm now. So, scalp is wet.
get all of the hair, and hopefully you can hear me over this water, but all of the hair that would have gotten all of my clothes is now in this towel. And I got two minutes left on this camera, so I'm going to try to do this in that two minutes. I've got some parts that I could probably be neater on. I'm gonna leave it be for now. Sorry about the water. Um, I'm gonna leave it be for now and go ahead and oil my scalp. Let me put some of these drops on. concoction you don't need much yes don't didn't even use all of the dropper oh I'm getting a zit that just like literally just push-ups after everything else is done, after I've washed up, brushed my teeth, cleaned my face, all that stuff, I do standing push-ups. So I might just do a video on that, just so that you guys can see that it's um, it's not difficult to work out at home. And um, the way that I do these things makes it very easy for me to do them. I, I'm not that. So that so the easier that I can off, the more likely to actually um, actually do the, the do the, the workout. So and there, I may share. I may share. I may do a video. Um, so, yeah, um, so, yeah, I may share, may do a video doing that. Um, so, yeah, so the oil is on my scalp and it smells so good. 
Um, and I, like I said, I'm going to put the ingredients. I didn't condition my hair. Sorry, let me backtrack. I did not put the conditioner in my hair after I washed it. I just did the, the shampoo. Um, and there are spots that I can neaten up. I'm just not going to do it right now. Maybe I'll do it later tonight before I go to bed. Um, but the oil that I use, I'll put the ingredients um, in the description box or below the video. And um, like I said, I don't have a problem sharing these ingredients because I'm not trying to sell it. So it's no big deal to me. Um, but for those who are trying to sell their stuff, like um, Jessica is, uh, or BB Judy, wait, yeah. She's the real BB Judy on IG. Uh, but for those who are trying to sell their product, um, kudos. I mean, because girlfriend has, you know, baby sister has, and I can say baby sister because I'm older than her. Um, and I'm, I'm learning so much from her and how she's getting this thing done. Um, but she has made a tremendous amount of money uh, selling her drops. And that's a beautiful thing, how to her. But hair products, it's not my thing. That's why I don't do those kind of videos very often. These kind of videos very often because it's just not my thing. There's, that's, it's not my lane. Um, and I believe as long as I stay in my lane, the blessings that are supposed to come for me while I'm in my lane, active, um, they will come. But I like natural products. And I've experimented with making my own stuff for quite some time. Um, but I don't have a problem supporting someone who makes their own and markets it. Don't have a problem with that. But again, I'll put the ingredients to mine um, in the box below so that you can see what I use. And it works. Um, you can feel it working. Like I can feel right now the peppermint working. That's another ingredient that I use. I can feel that working right now. Um, and peppermint is one that invigorates, um, invigorates the scalp. It invigorates the hair follicles. So that promotes growth. And uh, so yeah. So. Let me finish cleaning up this mess that I've created in here, even though it's not that big of a mess because I like to clean as I go. But let me finish cleaning this mess up, putting all this stuff back. And um, I hope that you enjoyed this, I really do. It's not something, like I said, that I do very often because it's really not my lane. Um, but I enjoy doing certain things and I figured I would just share it because you may get something from it, who knows. So with that, peace and blessings. Remember to walk in your purpose and know that I appreciate you. And what I have added to my tagline, and I usually do it on my um, coaching channel or when I do live videos, what I've added to my tagline is write as if your life depends upon it because it just might. It just might. All right. See you guys. Hope you enjoyed.